experience. A very few words about him. Robin Alex Panikar is the Chief Product Officer, Finots, and Venture Partner at Unicorn India Ventures. He is a technology enthusiast with his heart on enterprise cloud applications and mobile technologies. He contributed to the development of career grade VoIP hosted application service, helped startups in the cloud and mobile space to get their product prototyped and developed, make ready for my market. Now he is building Finots. Today's session is co hosted by Federal Institute of Science and Technology academicians and industry leaders will share their knowledge and experience. The webinar scheduled today will be a 40 minute session. You can type your questions in the Q&A on the left side of the screen. Also, those who are interested in asking questions directly, they can use raise hand feature by clicking on the button. We will allow you to talk. I would request each of you take this as an opportunity to connect with him and make the most out of the session. I would like to formally invite Robin to take over the session. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nasir. Uh, am yeah. I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I audible? Okay. Yeah. You, uh, do, do, you, do, you. do Yeah. All right, all right. Um, so, um, uh, how, how, many, how many of you are attending? How many, how many attend? Okay, I can see it on the left. Okay. So yeah. Cool. Uh, Hello all, uh, uh, welcome to this uh, session. Um, thank you Kerala Startup Mission for giving me this opportunity. Um, I'm, a, I'm a software engineer by passion and profession. Uh, and because I'm a software engineer, I ended, ended up becoming an entrepreneur as well. Um, so that is my background. And um, at some point in time, I started getting into uh, uh, small ticket investments as well, uh, startup investments. And as of now, I'm a venture partner with Unicorn India Ventures, which is a Mumbai based uh, venture capital uh, company. Um, Unicorn has invested in uh, eight startups in Kerala as of today. Uh, so, including um, startups like Gen Robotics, uh, which uh, manufactures the uh, manual uh, manhole cleaning robots um, probably you may you might have read about them in newspapers and other media uh, so yeah uh, that's my background um, so uh, in this session i'm uh, i'm going to talk about uh, the some basic things uh, when it comes to funding uh, I, I understand that all of you are students now maybe uh, some of you might have started some some small uh, ventures already. Uh, some of you are uh, probably thinking about doing after completing your education. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry for that. Uh, actually, my kids are uh, running around, so uh, <laughs> uh, you might see them running behind me. So uh, apologies for that. Um, I hope I'm still audible, right? Go ahead. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, so when it comes to funding, um, uh, one of the main questions, or one of the first questions that a startup usually asks an investor is, uh, "What should I do to get your money into my company?" So that is the fundamental question, right? Uh, how 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 does a startup or, or an entrepreneur convince uh, an investor to put money into the venture. Uh, it's a uh, it's a it's a bit of a tricky question uh, because um, the reasons change based on the kind of industry they are in, based on uh, uh, the investment thesis of the investor. So there are a lot of factors affecting that. But I will just uh, touch upon some of the points uh, which are most commonly uh, given as answers for that question. Give me a second. Let me uh, let me try opening a deck.
uh, Robin, can you turn on your, your camera? It's already turned on. Okay. Are you not able to see me? Nasif, uh, actually the participants can see Mr. Tobin, uh, Robin. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Then go ahead. Okay. Um. Hello, Robin. Is there any issue? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I think uh, I'm pretty presented. I mean, I just need to start the. Uh, share an entire screen. Okay. Do you have that uh, screen sharing option? Yes, I have. I, I'm seeing that, but I'm clicking on that is not taking this to the screen. If there is any issue, then uh, can you please share that presentation to Nasi for me? Okay, let me try that. Um, Okay, I think leave, leave it. Uh, I think I'm wasting wasting the time. Uh, um, so let let me let me um, take you through the points without a presentation. Let me try attempting that. Uh, first of all, first of all, uh, the first thing. That... Excuse me. Uh, if if needed. Uh... Hello, Robin. Can you hear me? Uh, no, the, if I send it to somebody else, then the problem will be like uh, I need to, uh, that deck is not. I mean, it's, um, I have to control the deck as well. So yeah, yeah okay. Uh, th that, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. I will, I will, uh, I will uh, uh, talk about that rather rather than going taking them through a presentation. Um, so uh, the first thing that any uh, investor will look look into when somebody uh goes to them for investment is the team itself so basically if you if you are a uh, two member or a three member startup team uh it's about uh, it's about evaluating how how uh, complete the team is uh how credible the team is how skilled the team is uh because you need to you, uh, you already have identified a solution and you already um, i mean you already have identified a problem and do you have the enough uh, required skills to uh, develop the solution for that so all those things matter so uh, there are multiple levels of uh, uh, assessment that that will go into when you do a pitch uh, and your pitch deck and your presentation should aid uh, that uh, that diligence process uh the first thing is uh, whether you are clear about the problem that you are attempting to solve uh, i've seen many times that uh, people explaining the problem as if they know about the problem but there is a difference between knowing about the problem and knowing the problem uh, the second second uh, second thing is much more um, what you say um, uh, uh, it, it requires a lot more effort to know the problem than knowing about the problem i'll give you an example uh, if you are building a software for healthcare uh, or a hospital 
uh, I've seen many times that people come up with solutions where, uh, which basically is built on their assumptions of how the hospital functions. Uh, they uh, what they see when they go to the hospital and what processes they 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 are part of when they go to an hospital so, and based on those uh, those assumptions they build the product and they uh, come to um, so I, I, apparently I also I'm part of a small uh, hospital in Trivandrum so I, I, they come to people like us uh, saying that okay we have we have this solution. Uh, I will give you a, I'll give you a very recent example. I, I, actually, even today it happened. So now because of the lockdown, a lot of these hospitals are trying to see if they can implement telemedicine solution. Uh, so uh, th there are peop uh, there are solutions out there which claim to solve this problem. But I have seen three presentations till now, three demos till now. Uh, but all of them are much like what we are using right now, the Zoom uh, Zoom Meet. Uh, kind of a solution which is more of a video conferencing solution but a telemedicine solution actually requires much more than that uh, it's about interaction between uh, the doctor and the patient right and that needs to be uh, uh, recorded properly so that whenever there is a legal situation that arise in future they uh, both parties should have enough materials that they can uh, present to the court right uh, so in a video, uh, 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 like uh, if if you are if you are going to a hospital, basically the process will be like um, uh, doctor enters all the diagnosis details, all those things in the hospital management system uh, or the electronic medical record, uh, and that's how the process uh, uh, takes off. But in telemedicine case, uh, it's, it's all video based, right? So how do how do you how do you legally secure uh the uh the uh, the process the treatment process um so all those things are not taken care at this point uh, i have not seen any telemedicine solution that solves this problem but uh from a doctor's point of view from a hospital point of view this is a very critical thing right uh that's because they have built this solutions uh, as if it's more like a video conferencing solution uh but that's not the case so uh uh, they know about a problem of uh, patients not able to go physically near a doctor, but they don't know the problem. That is the, that is the difference. I hope I under, I, I convert it um, uh, in a um, clear way. Um, after this, if you have any questions, please do ask. Uh, but uh, that is number one thing: whether you know know the problem. Uh, how, how do we evaluate that? When we ask you about a, about what exactly the problem you are solving, if you are going to lecture me with a 10 minutes, 15 minutes kind of a uh, talk mo mo monologue, uh, then we conclude that you are you actually don't know the problem. Uh, if you, if you really know the problem, you will be able to come up with something called elevator pitch, which is like. When you when you meet an investor in a lift, uh, you have around 15 seconds or 20 seconds or 30 seconds, or a minute or a couple of minutes. That's it. Uh, how do you how do you convey what you're doing to that guy to that investor within that short span of time? That, that's when you use something called elevator pitch. Have a very clear elevator. on explaining about the problem for uh, 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 understood the problem uh, so that is one thing make sure that you understand the problem clearly make sure that you are able to convey that you have understood the problem clearly in 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 short um, in short sentences uh, that's uh, that second thing then we usually ask for business plan that is another uh, a uh, tricky thing that we do uh, and what what most of the companies come up with is like very elaborate 18 months projections uh, income projection ex expense projections uh, 24 months projections and all those things uh, all fine we all know that nothing is going to work as per the business plan 
uh, that's how the world behaves. Uh, but what exactly we are looking at when we uh, um, ask for a business plan? We are again trying to evaluate how much you as a business owner, you as you as an entrepreneur, has thought through about the business. So uh, it's not just about some numbers, uh, some projections, but how much you have thought through, how much you have understood the market, uh, how, how much um, how much realistic vision or how, how much realistic um, plan you have in your hand. So these are the things that 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 are evaluated through a business plan, not the numbers. I'm talking about uh, startups which are at the early stage, uh, who have no other metrics to be evaluated with, right? Uh, they have they have near zero revenue. Uh, they have maybe one or two customers. That's it. Uh, a very early traction. So how do you evaluate that? Uh, those kind of companies. That's what I'm explaining. Later stage companies, later stage startups. There are other metrics also that will come into play. But I'm talking about very early stage companies. Uh, so uh, the business plan is another tool to evaluate the team. A third thing, if you are, a, say, if you are a two-member co-founding team or a three-member co-founding team, if each one of you are not able to convey your role or your contribution to the startup and the product clearly, uh, like I've seen many startups saying, we all built it, we all created it, we all do everything. Fine, but uh, that that shows some sort of lack of clarity as an organization, right? Uh, so that is not something that uh, we appreciate. Uh, we we look for it's not. I'm not talking about CEO role and CTO role and chief marketing officer role. It's about owning responsibilities. Who owns what? Uh, there is a misconception that uh, businesses have to be run in a very democratic way. That is not the case. Uh, very, very, it's very, it, very, most successful startups have a very autocratic way of running businesses. There will be one person who will stand up and say that, OK, this problem I own the problem. I am responsible. This decision, I am responsible. We are taking this decision and we are going on. So there should be one person who should be uh, responsible for the activities. So each of the founders should take responsibility of uh, different business functions. So that is another thing. Uh, so uh, from day one onwards, this uh, the uh, this right mix of co-founding team may not happen. Uh, so it's a, uh, the founders then have to put that kind of effort. They have to decide who is going to own marketing. Uh, that doesn't mean others are not going to contribute to marketing. The thing is that this guy is going to be the responsible person to handle marketing. Uh, when uh, once you decide that, then that person need to put a lot of effort in understanding, learning, unlearning, whatever um, he needs to do to uh, know more about marketing. Uh, similarly for technology, similarly for uh, operations. So th this is how you should uh, create your team. I mean, uh, it's not not just about the people. It's about how people continue to acquire skills. Uh, to be productive with the startup, so that the, that is something that we clearly evaluate. Uh, final thing, final thing is like uh, probably the most important thing and most intangible metrics that um, an investor uh, will have to verify. Uh, that is how much passionate you are. You are. How much hunger for growth you have. Uh, so I always repeat in almost all the sessions that I take about what exactly a startup is. Start my my definition of startup, and this is very commonly accepted in um, among startup circles as well. Uh, startup is that very early stage venture that attempts illogical growth. I repeat, illogical growth. So. Uh, 
yeah it's about startup attempting the illogical growth they may succeed may not succeed but they all, always try to attempt that they always attempt to uh, achieve illogical growth so what exactly is illogical growth that's another question right uh, take the case of uber uber is world's top cab service company it was started in 2018 there were many cab service providers uber was not the first cab service company in the world but in a span of 8 to 10 years they became world's number one so that is illogical growth uh, there the uh, it's very difficult to uh, plot that growth or anticipate that growth in a business plan honestly uh so that is uh, that is something that the startup should try for and that uh, how do you achieve that again I, i said this matrix is something that is very intangible the only way to achieve that is by continuous upskilling of the founders keeping the fire in the belly uh, alive uh, so uh, working harder doing smart work uh, it's 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 about um, and how, how investors evaluate that is through the entire conversation that they have with the founding team so the conversation itself will uh, convince when you talk about business plan when you talk about competition when you talk about market um, uh, market potential if you are not seeing that passion if you are not seeing that hunger for growth then it's a thumbs down so these are the things that you should remember when you approach your investor first of all um what was the first thing um uh, be sure about problem you 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 should have very clear understanding about what problem you are trying to solve see uh, i am not emphasizing on solution here that that you should understand uh for a very early stage startup the solutions Uh, they will start with one kind of a solution and over the period of time they will understand that uh, market requires something different slightly different or better then they pivot so solutions keep changing or uh, at least in the early stages uh, the original feature set that you wanted for your product might change when the actual product goes out in the market so the solution changes um, but the problem statement remains uh that, uh that that's when you uh pivot uh pivot and change to other solutions uh, so that's why you need to be very clear about the problem statement second is about uh uh business plan and things like that your pitch deck all those things that should convey how much you have thought through about the business how um, uh, it's not not about any numbers it's not saying that okay uh, this month i will have this much expense uh, this much income next month i will have this much income um, which means x percentage of growth blah 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 no it should it should be uh, it should be uh, what you what you say honest honest numbers you just need to you, you just cannot uh come up with some uh, assumptions and i mean some what do you call um uh, uh i would say namlu malayalathi parayalo thallu annu parayunu adu adu cheyiru so you should not do that uh, uh and uh then the other thing is um having a hunger for growth uh if if you don't have growth then you are dead it's as simple as that and in a in the in this startup world um through technology you can achieve growth like never before uh take the case of Air, airbnb again um airbnb is uh, selling more rooms than marriott worldwide but uh, marriott is 100 uh, 100 plus years old um airbnb is less than a decade old but still airbnb could achieve that growth so th- th- this is this is what um, you should also try to achieve you should also um uh, you should also try to 
take your startup to that level you may or may succeed or may not succeed but you should definitely make that attempt uh so that's my uh my inputs to you regarding uh funding uh i think we have uh, another 10 minutes or so right probably I, we can open up for questions yeah hi robin yes yeah there are a few questions asked in the q and a box uh, can you answer that okay uh okay uh so i will i will start with the last question and um, i will i will cover all the questions but i will start with the last one uh how to meet investors like unicorn ventures uh okay here is the tip usually investors find you it's not that you go behind investors that, that also happens but uh much more important thing is making sure that you are in the radar of investors right uh, i i've written some personal checks as well uh, i've invested in my personal capacity as well and all my invest investments i initiated the investment conversation that's because the start startups were in my radar i knew the founders over a period of time it's a function of trust right uh, um uh, writing a check to somebody is a function of trust so uh, you need to may you need to network you need to be active in platforms like linkedin um uh, yeah. you need to follow investors uh engage with them on twitter so those are the things that you should do uh and um make just make sure that you are visible you are visible everywhere investors will find you and especially you have uh, an organization like startup mission uh, where uh, the data about the startups are available in a much organized way so in, i think most of the investors who come to kerala probably approach startup mission first and um, uh, check with them about uh, what kind of startups you have and things like that so it's very important for you also to have an engagement with kerala startup mission so that um um did i answer that question whoever has asked that uh, i hope so a startup two startups solving the same uh, a problem or uh, you, you, probably that is that is what you intended to ask whether two, two startups solving the same problem whether investors will invest in normal case no but but uh there are cases where such things have happened as well no th this one this very rarely happens with uh, angel investors angel investors they they bet on uh, one startup for one problem statement almost religiously they follow that pattern uh, but uh, there are situations where vcs and private equity companies have done something similar uh i personally have gone through that kind of an experience uh the last company i worked for before i started on my own it was called cilandro uh cilandro was a voice over ip uh, technology company based out of bay area uh so uh, we went through uh, some good times and then some bad times i was one of the early employees uh and it at some stage it got acquired by its competitor uh it was a hostel acquisition and that happened because both both the companies had common investors so those kind of situation can happen uh, and they, they they were private equity private equity uh, investors uh so they uh, those kind of situations can happen but at early stage uh i have not come across a situation where uh, angel investors and early stage investors investing in similar uh company i mean companies which address the same problem uh what do you think about government grants for startup and how we able to get it 
my honest answer is government grants are good uh, if they don't make you lazy uh, but, uh, i mean uh, i i know that i'm i'm using kerala startup missions platform but i'm uh, and they are doing a very good job of uh, providing support for startups through different grants and um, also facilitating grants from other entities like uh, bpcl spcl and all uh, but uh, one problem that the founders should make sure that will never happen to their startup is they should never become lazy because of these grants uh, uh, the, uh, it's a, don't consider these grants as free money Uh, you should judiciously use the fund uh, and you should have set objectives um, regarding the outcome of the fund fund utilization uh, so government grants are good but yeah it's up to you it's it's it should not make you bad it should not it should not uh, like um, kids with a lot of pocket money might get ruined right so you should not get into that kind of a situation how we able to get it i think uh, startup mission uh, is the uh, best organization to answer that uh, you just need to approach them right uh, they have offices in cochin trivandrum and calicut i think uh, so just go to their office uh, talk to them and they will help you with that for tele for uh, next question is for telemedicine startup what are the standards and certification need to build an application for website ha ah, okay so telemedicine till very recently is illegal even now it is not very clear whether it's legal but because of this covid situation government has relaxed some rules uh, so just uh, continue keep watching this space um standards or certifications are not yet in place in india uh, of course um, uh, if it's a medical solution probably you need to i mean and if you need to sell it overseas then you need to have certain certifications like the hipa and all those things uh, and then uh, definitely the ge general uh, encryption and security related uh, uh, standards that you should be following should be applied here as well uh, you are handling um healthcare data so handle with care you need to make sure that it's properly encrypted uh it's uh, it's properly um, uh, segmented and segregated uh so other than that as of now india doesn't have any uh, law uh, talking about telemedicine and things like that uh, okay there is one more thing uh, you need to have your server in india if you are handling indian patients you need to have your server in india and this is true for most countries which makes this entire um, domain bit challenging uh, if you have uh, european um, so other than that india as such have not come up with any uh, laws or certifications the data privacy bill that is going to come up in the next session of parliament uh, is going to govern a lot of uh, a lot of things related to this domain as well as not uh, okay what do you, what do you think about government grants for startup and i think i think we answered that what is the maximum funding from government side Oh my God! I uh, probably na Nasif, you, you you should be able to answer that. What is the maximum funding from government side? Uh, is there an upper limit? Uh, probably, I think it's a 12 lakh grant that you provide, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, right now, uh, the upper limit is maximum 12 lakh as a grant. The third fund. Cool. So th uh, that answers that question. Uh, there are a lot of templates already available in internet uh, regarding structuring business plan i'm not sure whether a startup mission have a template as such uh, but the uh, but the template is generally available 
and especially your um, uh, chartered accountants if they have worked with startups before and valuations before they should be having this uh, template but uh, as i said before it's not about putting some numbers and uh without without any proper basis whatever numbers you put there need to be justified uh at some point like when you say that you are expecting a certain expense that need to be clearly justified uh, when you say that you are expecting um uh, uh, 10% revenue growth month on month you need to justify that how you are going to do that and what kind of investment need to go into marketing and sales to achieve that kind of a income growth so um, make sure that you don't you don't bluff in your business plan uh, as i said uh, you should not bluff because uh, it's not the numbers that are being evaluated you are being evaluated so yeah uh, does startup mission have templates for some of these things nasif yeah template for uh, what the business plan Uh, generally we are using business model canvas that our uh, template and okay. the lean canvas uh, like if, if you can search in google business model canvas so there are like you can uh, use the nine like value proposition the, the uh, supply chain the revenue streams and all just uh, search in google business model canvas we are also using that general template all right what are the funding agencies for startups not related to technology related innovations uh i am not sure uh, what exactly uh, non technology related innovations actually mean but because every innovation have to be a, uh, is technology uh, uh so probably what you are asking is uh, what if it's not a software product or an iot product kind of thing probably uh, is my assumption correct binu how do i how do i get his response okay uh, let me answer um, assuming that you are you in you, you are asking about non software non iot kind of startups um, so if 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 you are if you are coming up with a social impact venture there are a lot of funding agencies um some of them are already associated with startup mission as well uh, uh there, there are um, um uh, fund um, uh, there there is a, there is a funding agency called will grow uh, which funds social impact uh, omdr is and is a is a fund that funds social impact uh, ventures uh, so uh, yeah there are there there there, there are multiple uh, uh uh funders who fund uh, uh businesses based on their social impact uh, by the way I, I, let me just clarify one thing um, again this is one question i ask the audience usually uh, do you think uber is a technology company or a cab service company uh and the, let me answer answer the question as well uber is a technology company U- uber is a technology company because uber uses technology to execute its core function right uh, but the domain is cab service similarly uh, your domain could be healthcare your domain could be retail but if you are using a technology solution to solve technology if you are using technology to solve the uh non tech problem then i would consider you as a technology startup what type of repayment offer will convince an investor uh, that varies from investors to investor uh, but usually angel investors ex- expect to have an exit in uh 3 to 5 year kind of a time frame uh and vcs expect a exit in 5 to 7 year kind of a time frame uh when you say exit um it's about selling back the equity that they hold 
for a multiple of the va value that they bought it for. Uh, uh, so uh, it's a multiple. I, I, I let me first tell you that what we what investors expect is a multiple, not a percentage. Okay, uh, uh, it need to. Uh, so it, it, usually, usually uh, VCs get a return of around uh, um, uh, an IRR of uh, uh, twenty five percent to thirty percent. That is the kind of uh, IRR that VCs usually get uh, after going through all the process of some startups failing, some startups. Of doing okay, okay. Some startups doing really good. Uh, so yeah, an IRR of thirty percent over a period of uh, three to five years will be something that will interest an investor. Uh, honestly, uh, in most cases, investors won't make that much, uh, but that that will be the uh, that will be a reasonable expectation from an investor. As a startup, how we could distribute our share to investors? I mean, how many percentage we can give initially? OK, uh, so first thing, uh, you don't need to dilute a percentage of your business at very initial stages. There are other modes of investment, like um, uh, compulsory convertible debentures, right? It's, it's a quasi debt kind of a uh, uh, investment vehicle where uh, the startup takes the money as a debt. And after a maturity period, at, at a later stage, when the business is more mature, uh, when there could be other investors who are invest interested in, at that time, uh, uh, this, will, this will convert to equity. One second. Sorry, that is my kid. Uh, so uh, that is one. Uh, uh, the advantage of using something like CCD is you don't need to go behind valuation and the headache be behind that at a very initial stage. Uh, that will for sun as. Uh, but if you are going for a um, equity dilution like a CCPS or something, I mean, uh, preferential shares, if you are, if you are uh, going for that or something, that valuation is dependent on uh, how much you need, how much money you need, how much the investors are willing to value your company at. Uh, so these are the two things that will decide what percentage. So if, if you need uh, two crores uh, and uh, if you need, um, if, if, if your company's valuation is uh, 10 crores, then uh, your value, your, your, if your company's post money valuation is uh, 10 crores, 20 percentage. Uh, so, but that that's when an investor agrees to invest two crores at a valuation of ten crores. If he, if he, he or multiple investors insist on saying that okay, you don't have that much valuation, you have eight eight crore valuation, then it's up to you to decide whether to take that money or not, right? Uh, so, end of the day, it's that kind of a situation for very early stage startup. There are no hard and fast rules. Make sure that it, it is always better to not to dilute. Uh, too much at a very early stage. Uh, when I say that, I mean around 20-25% could be the upper limit at a, for a very early stage investor. Between the right balance between your ask and your valuation expectation. How to find investors in early stage before generating revenue itself? Very difficult. Uh, very difficult, uh, and given the times, it's going to be even more difficult. Um, you need to, uh, as, I, as I said before, uh, investment is a function of trust. So how do you earn trust from somebody uh, whom you might have met one time or two times? Uh, 
so you need to substantiate your credibility with some implementation capabilities right uh, so here is what any idea without proper implementation is bullshit uh, so you need to prove that you are capable to implement how do you how do you prove that if you can show that through some initial traction that will be the best uh, but there are cases even uh, unicorn has invested in pre revenue startups when we invested in gen robotics they were not in revenue right uh, th that's the case with lot of other startups also that we invested in uh, kerala uh, but again it all depends on how what kind of trust you are able to create with you, with that investor it's it's a it's a long run process um, convincing them uh, if 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 you if you don't have early revenues make sure that you have other things like as i said before uh, you should be able to convince them about your clarity on the business um, uh, your your understanding about the market your understanding about the problem that you are attacking so uh make sure that you do all those things uh, then the investors may may invest in you before revenue but usually uh, uh you cannot take that for granted so you should not wait for an investor to come uh, to generate any revenue you, your objective should be to make sure that your business continues with or without the investor and um uh, uh you you continue your focus on getting money into your bank account uh, through uh, through uh, marketing and sales how we start up different from a normal firm okay this is something that uh, uh i i answer i mean i told you b before uh, we ended my monologue uh i i will repeat it again start difference between a norm okay so here is one example that i very usually give so uh, uh, you might have seen this kirana shop in the nearby shops right we don't call them entrepreneurs uh, we call them self employed people right uh, but the moment that guy starts another shop 5 uh, kilometers away another shop another shop another shop in yet another city then he becomes an entrepreneur then it becomes startup like then it becomes uh, be, that's uh, he is doing he is angry for as i said um, if you are if you are somebody who is uh, attempting to make illogical growth then you are a startup if you are uh you, you if you are happy with what you get uh if you are uh, like uh, okay i have this shop i have this venture in my city let me be content with it uh then you then i won't call you a startup it's a it's a small it's a sme then at that point i hope i answered that question what are the different types of investors and to approach the right one uh okay so uh, based on the stage of investment you can classify investments as early um, angel investors in seed investors slash angel investors basically these two category people will be uh, investing their own money into your venture okay uh, it, it will be their personal money uh, with their money if you are able to show some growth then you might start attracting vcs in the institutional investors vcs basically raise funds from other hnis and family offices and collect or pool all that money and then invest deploy that money into uh, multiple startups so that comes at a grow, uh, growth stage uh then comes the private equity companies like the black stones of the world uh, they they uh, okay uh, vcs they invest money they are interested in your business but they will never run your business okay uh, so they don't want to be like uh, micromanaging things and uh, they want you to continue running your business that is the, that that's the 
usual uh, approach of vcs but when it comes to uh, private equities they are, these are companies who are interested in taking a larger stake in the company and even controlling stake and then then they then they go ahead and run it like they will appoint a ceo or cto or cmo whatever 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 is required to business uh, run the business they will take a more active role so these are the types of investors um, at a very early early stage you should go behind angel investors uh, when you go behind angel investors make sure that you learn about that person a bit what kind of domains interest uh, him uh, what kind of uh, uh, products what kind of markets uh, that um, uh, other stuff is portfolio my answer yeah. to your question robin we can wind up this session uh, can you select one last question after that we can okay okay there are questions about space tech which i don't know nothing about okay the fun okay i will answer two questions okay so is nda necess signing necessary when we proposing business plan to investors no thank you uh, we we have we are as an investor i don't uh, i don't um, encourage startups to come up with an nda and get me signed on that before the business plan is presented uh, no no investor will agree to that uh, no you investor in usual circumstances i must clarify how to effectively manage the fund provided to startup founder okay uh, when when you pitch to the investor one of the Uh, things that you should clearly convey to the investor you are going to deploy the fund sales other other functions of the business uh, you should have a um, clear understanding about the fund deployment and you should convey that to the uh, founder uh, investor as well my my advice to you is when you are taking external money whether it's angel or uh, vc money or private equity make sure that you invest in creating growth not for sustenance enna vacha ningal sambalam edukkan vendi thalla ee fund upayogikkandathu rather it should be to grow your business uh, starting operations in a new city starting operations abroad um, so those kind of things uh, Th these are the things that you use uh, that you use your funds uh, that you take from external sources whether it's vc or angel or even bank debt A anything external money that you are taking in make sure that you uh, you invest in uh, growth related activities i think that's it uh, our time is up yeah so yeah thank you robin for this wonderful session i think i hope like uh, every attendee got the like answers i think few more questions are there but due to time constraint we are winding up the session so every day we are like conducting this kind of inspire to innovate webinar session tomorrow also we plan uh, uh, at 5 o'clock with uh, afsal salu he is one of the startup founder uh, basically he like uh, exited from one of the uh, successful startup then right uh, right now he started one uh, health tech startup called best talk so uh, tomorrow he is going to share his experience the entrepreneurial journey so please register for tomorrow session it's 6 o'clock uh, okay thank you everyone thank you robin thank you so much thank you Goodbye.